Hey everybody, welcome back to this special room where we have these amazing conversations. Today I'm with somebody who I think you're going to know. I have no idea who he is because I like I live in a cave. I'm, you know, uh, but I, I know a little bit about him once I heard about what he what he does. But here's the amazing thing. In all transparency, this is not going to be a podcast like every other podcast that this man's done. He's done some he's done quite a few. And there was some trepidation on his part because he said, well, you don't want to talk about my work. You don't want to talk about my career. You don't want to talk about the things that I always talk about. Like, what are you going to talk about? I said, well, just see. Let's just see what happens. And the whole purpose of this show is to get behind the veneer of what we do and meet the person that does what we do. So in doing this, what I found is in every single conversation, there's something really fabulous that happens. Sometimes the conversations are really boring, very rarely, but sometimes they are. Sometimes they're in incredible. Sometimes people cry at the end of the conversation. Sometimes people laugh. Sometimes people have incredible realizations. Sometimes people just have a good conversation. I have no agenda in this but to, to do for my guests what I always try and do in life, which is love and, love and accept them listen to them and 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 tell them and let them know they've been heard and acknowledge them and validate them for what they believe and what they're saying i don't necessarily believe like they believe but that's okay in 65 years of living nobody's ever said to me danny you have to believe like i believe when they feel loved and accepted and listened to and heard and acknowledged and validated that's normally enough the show i should say is being sponsored by the book and over my left shoulder which is the mosaic the Mosaic is a story about a boy who loses his parents and is told, he asks the adults where his parents are, and they tell him they're in a place called heaven. He sets out in search of the place called heaven, but the people he finds are not the sages and the rabbis and the priests and the ministers. They're common, ordinary people. And his experience with those people changes his perspective of the way he sees them. That perspective shift changes everything in his life because he realizes eventually that the heaven he's looking for is that momentary change of perspective where what he sees and he's sure of what he sees isn't what he sees at all. And that moment is so beautiful and sacred that that's what the book is really about. Hmm. I fulfilled my obligation to my sponsor, The Mosaic. I thank you for that. <laughs> and I want to now just introduce you to Jeffrey Bryan. Jeffrey, welcome to the conversation. How are you? Well, I'm good, Danny. Thank you for having me. It's How my absolute, I, I'm good too. It's my absolute honor. But let me ask you that because most of the time we let people just get away in that place. We ask people how they're doing and they say, I'm good, I'm great, I'm fine. I really want to, I really want to ask it again with the sense of we're in the midst of a pandemic. Right. We're in the midst of a civil, civil revolution. We're in the, we're, we're sitting in a Black Lives Matter and a presidential campaign where a lot of our values are at stake. We're a couple years into a Me Too movement where women are saying, I want to be looked at and thought about in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're all being affected by this silent virus that's going around keeping us somewhat isolated. How are you in Muxed all that? Well, it's shit. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. You know, <laughs> okay. but amongst all that, I'm... Uh, uh, I'm fortunate. My wife and I are fortunate that we have not gotten sick. Uh, you know, so we we uh, we don't let that go by uh, without thinking about you know those who've had it worse. I mean, there's a lot of people that I'm sure, um, based on what you just described, uh, in some form or another, are with people that they may not want to be with, and they're stuck, yeah. or they're sick or uh, they lose all of their financial situations, you know, gone under, you know, terribly. I can't, I can't say that my life is um, that bad when I look at the reality of the rest of, you know, the right. whole picture. So when you say, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. I love that. And I mean it, you know. I, I, and I know, you can feel it. You can feel you mean it. I once had a friend of mine come up to me and said, he asked me how I was doing. I said, it's really been a shitty day. And he said, really, 
Do you know that 99% of the world would, would give their last dollar to have your shitty day? Because the world that they live in is so mm-hmm. challenged and so hard and so, you yeah. know, and so, and it, well, it really It's the isolation me. what makes this difficult. Because regardless of how bad, if you want to have, you know, there's always somebody that's got it worse. And there's always, you know, the real bad situations that, you know, you, you got 8 billion people on the planet. There's going to be yeah. uh, the gamut of, of a spectrum of, of bad. But it's the isolation that we've been forced to be dealing with that has, I think, exacerbated our own personal feeling of how good and bad it is. That's absolutely true. Yeah, absolutely. Because yesterday was the first day in six months that I got to see my daughter. My daughter's developmentally delayed. And she's been living in a group home. And they're on complete shutdown in group homes because they're they're most challenged. And I'm also of the age. It was, it, thank God we have social media and we can talk yeah. on FaceTime every day. Yeah. But it was the first time I got to, to, had to, make, to, to take dinner to her and to sit with her and to hug her, even though I probably shouldn't have been hugging her, but I did. And, and we're talking now about getting the possibility for them to get the okay for her birthday at the end of this month to go from her quarantined house into a car into our quarantine house and you know be able to spend her birthday with her. But that isolation I feel is so strong and how much I miss her and how much she misses me and she doesn't understand how do you understand how do you tell a developmentally delayed kid their dad they can't see their dad you you can't it's um, yeah it's you know the thing is is that um, this pandemic uh, has brought to light things that we take for granted you know as human beings we are social and it's part of our um, need Oh, it's, it's part of our, our living. It's just it's how we accomplish our lives. You know, it's how we connect. Um, so that social interactivity has been removed from the, from many people's picture, and um, it causes a lot of problems that may not surface right away. You know, it, but they're there, and it's it, it really brings to light how um, how important and how connected the world really is. And and I hope that it's kind of a wake up call for people to not take that for granted because as a musician, which you haven't mentioned that you haven't told anybody, that's what I do. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably more aware. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, <laughs> what do you, who are you and what do you do? <laughs> I'm a keyboard player. <laughs> I love the keyboard. Uh, no. Um, what I was trying to say though, uh, real quick, I'll just get it out is, um, you know, I'm not saying that musicians in general, uh, I'm, you know, are, are worse off than others, but we are, un- and I would say entertainers too, people that are, are, that their businesses rely on social markets, social, yeah. you know, social activities. Those people like myself um, are sort of, you know, right. You know, it's very, very obvious to us what's missing. And when you can't do those things, um, it, it, it's not just frustrating, um, it's debilitating, you know, yeah. um, most people that are creative, I would think I'm going to go out on a limb here. I don't want to speak for everybody, but I would say that most people have an introspective sort of, uh, you know, to be creative, you, you have to go inward and you have to, yeah. you know, it's just part of how the process works. So there's the, the entertainers, you know, you're, you're kind of, you're kind of schizophrenic a little bit, you know, there's this introvert that drives the creativity and then there's that need to get it out, which some, for some people, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to get on stage, but other people that's, that's where it need that's where it drives you. Yes. The point is, is that there with, without that extrovert, there's no introvert and without the introvert, there's no extrovert. They feed each other. And now you can't do either. I mean, you can sit home and keep writing and, and yeah, you can be an introvert. You can be just the, introvert. so it's very unbalanced and yes. it's, it, it, it very much to me, it very much seems to, um, uh, mimic, or I should say, you know, it, it, it seems to be, uh, exactly where we are in, in the world right now. It's very unbalanced. Wow. There's, there's too much of this and not enough of that. And, um, 
this just drives it home. It just makes it much more obvious. And I think it's a wake-up call, wake call, you know? So I want to inv- – absolutely. And I want to take a moment and invite the listener into this conversation. And I want to invite those of you who are listening to this to see where do you stand on this introvert, extrovert uh, uh, presentation that Jeffrey's given makes a lot of sense to me, but just because it makes sense to me, just because it makes sense to Jeffrey, where do you stand? Have you ever thought about the fact that there's two parts of us? There's the introvert part of us that is contemplative, and there's the extrovert, extrovert part of us that is that sh- needs to get out in the world and share what we've done with the world. And how are you doing in this world where that one or side or the other doesn't get doesn't get enough? For me, the world before COVID was extrovert heavy, introvert light, because people were spending so much time outside of themselves that they didn't have the time to go inside. And so, like I have a saying that when you can't go outside, go inside. And that to me has been the blessing of COVID that it's caused us to take all of our energy from outside to inside. But that imbalance is what Jeffrey's talking about, which makes you feel unstable. Exactly. It's the imbalance. I mean, as you know, I'm, I'm, you know, especially with what you described your book, um, it's all about balance. Life, life is a, a delicate balance, you know. Um, you eat, but not too much. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Have fun, but don't go crazy. You know, I mean, be introverted, but don't be a hermit. I mean, there's just too, there's too many things that are, that we're forcing that are kind of, um, uh, they're, it's you know it's it, we're being forced to 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 now be one of the just be one thing and and not able to to be more balanced so that balance isn't able to be brought out and so it, the because of that it creates a lot of um i'm sure it's creating a lot of psychological issues for people that may not you know they're not necessarily clinical or death right. you know uh, but they they are they're going to be need to be dealt with, you know, and certainly one way of dealing with them is just to get out and have some fun or get out and do whatever it is that you need to do to balance that. But we can't do that right now. So it, it builds up. It's, it's, uh, it's frustrating. So again, I want to invite the listener just because what Jeffrey's saying is so astute and so beautiful. I want to invite the listener to just think about where are you imbalanced in your life? Where are you, not just COVID related, but where are you way in one direction and not in another? When, and a balance doesn't mean that it has to be 50-50. Sometimes you can balance well, it's, by, it's a, right, like that. It's right. finding that fulcrum point that, well, it, that it's, kills it's everything in balance. It's never 50-50. It's not supposed to be. They feed off each other. You know, you push a little bit this way and then it pulls a little this way. And that's, that's healthy. Sort of a, yeah. a, a like, you know, kind of like being in the... In, Kind of like being in the groove. You just kind of yeah. find that, that sweet spot. You know? Yeah. That's what life is. It's trying to surf the highs and lows and stay in the middle as best as you can. Sometimes you get a little too on the left side, sometimes you get a little too on the right, whatever, the, the high side, the low side. The point is, is that in normal times, you're able to correct that or self-correct it by virtue of just, God, I need to get out or I need to do this or I need to get this released as opposed to just sitting on my desk, whatever it is. And now we're forced not to be able to do that. So it's, it's, it's not healthy. But so I want to lob over at. the net to you the other possibility, that in normal times we are able to get things out. But I find in the work that I do with people mm-hmm. that very few people spend the time inwardly to get to know themselves. And I think this few period... Do. yeah. Yeah. And this period where we can't go outside and we're stuck with what with ourselves right. is causing a lot of interest in people because what either they take the opportunity to do it or they get anxious and go through with some of the things you're talking about. I think it's I think it's important for, to put in context what you're saying by saying what you do and who you play with in the band that you work with. Well, um, I'm a keyboard player by trade. I, um, I'm the keyboard player, player for the band Survivor. Um, remember Eye of the Tiger? Uh, yeah. That's the band. Um, plus, I was also, um, I have connections with them throughout the years just because I was also a, um, a cast member of the original Karate Kid film. So I've been in the entertainment business my whole life. 
What does that mean? You were a cast member in the original Karate Kid. Um, I was in the movie. I, I was one of the cast, the original, the original uh, Karate Kid movie in 1984. So you know that on Netflix they've bring, the they Cobra brought Kai. back Cobra yeah. Kai. Of course. Uh, there's some scenes with me in it that they've used as flashbacks. We're yeah. just watching that right now, so I'm going to look for you now. Yeah. Well, you'll oh. find me in the tournament when they do the flashbacks for the tournament scenes and a couple uh, uh, flashback scenes to the beach where he gets his butt kick for the first time. Um, you really pick fine friends to hang around with Freddie. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I worked on the film the whole time, but unfortunately the way they edited that movie, there was a lot, there was a, there was a, what I call the Freddie's gang, which was Israel Warby, myself, Ken Daly, Tom Fridley, uh, and Frankie Avalon Jr. The five of us were um, a group of uh, his friends. Daniel LaRusso's friends that came to Reseda, we weren't karate guys, and they had a lot more in the, in the in the script, and a lot of it got cut out, or a lot of it just yeah. didn't get shot. So um, unfortunately, my part was to you know, to the observer is not not that incredible, but um, to me, I worked on the whole. I was there for eight months. It was a lot of work. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. So. How was it for you to go from film, even whatever, being a part of a film that right. was a big film? Karate Kid was a big film. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, and it to go from. a big film. Yeah. Yeah. And to go from that to. Did you do more acting in. No. Well, you have to understand, uh, we go back to balance. See, I was a musician. That's what, what my uh, entire, you know point was to you know when i got up in the morning you know that's what that's what drove me was to to play music to write music to sing i was singing a lot especially when i was very young and um i kind of fell into the acting thing it's just i looked young for my age and that was kind of there were a lot of those john hughes movies going around where you know uh michael j fox was popular so looking young and you know teenage movies they were real popular and they and apparently i looked the part for a lot of things. Wow. So uh, I did a I did a short thing on uh, Merv Griffin show. I'm showing my age here, but the Merv Griffin show way back. I don't know if you remember. Um, of course I remember. Look at me. Do I, you don't think I know Merv Griffin? Well, I, I know, but there, there's going to be people like, who's Merv Griffin? Oh, who's Merv <laughs> Griffin? What did he do? <laughs> he was like with Johnny Carson and those guys. Yeah, he was like right? TV mogul. He, I think he, what, did he yeah. own Jeopardy? And he owned yes. uh, Price is Right or something? Um, anyway, the point is, is that I, I, I ended up uh, singing on his show for oh. a segment that we did, that he did. And um, from there, uh, a manager approached me and said I should be acting. And I'm like, I don't know how to act. Um, and they sent me out on in interviews. It wasn't the first movie I got, though. I, there was another movie called the well, Hot Moves. Hot Moves. Uh, and um, I, uh, that was the first movie I got. And I, I uh, was a feature, it was a feature film and I was a lead character in that. So I, I had a little bit of acting experience by the time I got to Karate Kid, which was later that year. Um, but honestly, getting back to that kind of balance theme that I had mentioned earlier, by the time Karate Kid was over, I spent a lot of time waiting around, waiting to, to do something and not being yeah. sort of an, not actually in my mind, especially at 18, being an actor. Um, I was a musician. I needed to get back to music. So I kind of felt like I was betraying myself a little bit, that wow. the balance was off. And wow. so um, when I, when Karate Kid finally let me out of my contract, meaning it was over, uh, I kind of went the other direction. And I, I really kind of worked hard to find play, people to play with and, you know, audition for bands and audition players. And um, I started writing music for for tv and for some uh you know video projects back in those days they had home video you know kind of like well now it's netflix and prime you know yeah. you've got all these different uh venues for for films back then it was the home video market you go to blockbuster and pick up a who knows who made it you know it was, right that was right it was, so i was doing a lot of music for videos like that but i've been playing keyboards my whole life and and singing and writing um I didn't get back in touch. I mean, it, I actually didn't really know that Survivor was going to call me until 30 years later. It's just a coincidence that a, a crazy serendipitous coincidence that cry, the, the theme song for Karate Kid was a Survivor song, The Moment yeah. of Truth. And so for a lot of Karate Kid fans and Survivor fans, they find that to be kind of crazy, you know, and it is. I, I was nuts. When it I, is when, crazy. 
yeah, I mean, 30 years later to, to be connected kind of back with my roots, so to speak, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's, it, it's been a, a really interesting circle. Um, and of course, that's been affected by COVID too. So it's really- Totally. Cool. Let me go another place if I can, sure. because for you, you said ever since you were a kid, you knew you wanted to be a musician. Yeah. There's so many people who are looking for their purpose and looking for what that means to be here on this earth. What what was it for you that made you realize that I'm, I want to be a musician? How did you know that with such certainty oh, at such an earlier age? I, I didn't know that, I, nor did I want that. I wanted to be an astronomer. Wow. I liked I liked science when I was 13. I, I had all the every book I could read. I was I, I had a telescope. Um, I was out in the backyard looking at the stars all the time. I, I wasn't particularly good at math, that I, but I didn't know that at 13. I was just really, really interested in the world. And um, music came into my life really sort of by accident, kind of the way Karate Kid did it. it I just found that when I, uh, when I sing, um, it brought a different kind of energy to my world. You know, um, people responded, and I liked it. So it was like that extrovert of me was getting a little taste. And um, so I, I've, never, I've never lost my interest in, in the sciences and things like that. Um, but I found myself really, really uh, drawn to the, uh, the communication aspect of, yeah. of singing and writing and, per and performing. Because really all we're doing as human beings when it comes to art, and it comes to um, literature or music is we're just communicating. We just yeah. have, we, we're, I have an idea. I want to share it with you. You have a thought about that and you re reflect it back to me. And that's, that's how we create the world. Love it. And so that's all that is to me. And it, whether I'm singing or I'm playing keyboards or I'm writing music or I'm reading a book, it, it all, it all really is the same thing to me. It's all just communication. Got so it. I kind of knew that early on, uh, and, and I did struggle, believe it or not, at 14 years old. You know, I knew that if I decided to, to put my energy into um, music, because um, at that time I wasn't playing an instrument, or at least not proficiently, um, I was just singing. I really enjoyed the way it made me feel physically, hmm. and because of that, it drew me to, to do more. But I realized very young that if I was going to continue to do that, I wanted to sing my own uh, my own ideas my own words so i needed to learn how to play an instrument so i could write songs so that's wow. how that whole thing kind of manifested let me, let me jump in were you as good a communicator with spoken word as you were with singing word well i didn't know that at the time i i'm not sure i was or i don't know uh i i because i was so young when i took to music that my whole focus shifted to just music so I never really got into public speaking, if that's what you're referring to, or poetry. No, or anything I'm like asking that. almost the opposite way, because so many times when people are good at music, they're not really great speakers, or they haven't spoke much, or they don't have many friends, or they don't have, oh, they see. they don't know socially how to be. But somehow, when you get them with music, it opens up a something yeah. in them. Was that your story, yeah. or was it a different story? No, I think well, when I was young, very young, early on at the beginning, I probably was. Uh, a little more introverted than I was extroverted. And um, I think music was my bridge. You know, yeah. it gave me, uh, it gave me a, a sense of purpose beyond just my hunger for learning. It, it, it sort of connected me with people that I may not otherwise be connected to. And cool. uh, I found that fascinating. It's why I'm always doing bands, why I've always enjoyed being in a group. Uh, I, I mean, I, I perform, you know, I perform myself or with one person or whatever, but I really, really enjoy being in a band and not for just what happens on stage. It's just my, it's just, just the banter and the, the ability to go back and forth and share ideas and arguments and, and, and whatever is necessary to get a product or to get well, that, that communication amongst those people. So it's always been about, like I said, it's always sort of a, a communal Commu uh, a communal way of communicating and, yeah. and that's that's just what's been driving me i think it's because of music that i became more balanced as a person yeah maybe i would have found and, it in another way i don't know it makes sense what you're saying because for you you said music is communication it's connection 
And so right. being in a band would be the epitome of that, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Of just yeah. being able to connect with guys. Jeffrey, what's important to you? Well, everything I just said. <laughs> That's a kind of vague question. Swipe uh, all that to the right. To uh, yeah. Well, y y we need to put that in some kind of context. Um, air. Breathing, okay. For good, you know. Clean air, is, that's important. I mean, you see, I'm not trying to be sarcastic, but it's... You know, yeah, you can be sarcastic. I don't mind. <laughs> What's important to me? I mean, uh, um, uh, I don't know how to answer the question, to be honest. Okay. What makes you happy? Um, music, my wife. Um, I, like, uh, uh, I like to be in, the, in that moment when, um, when I'm not thinking about what makes me happy or what makes me sad. I just like to be doing what I'm doing. And then I look at the clock and go, where did the time go? I know I was happy in those moments. Although I can't remember the happiest moments. If you look back, if I look back and try to think of the happiest moments, I'm going to miss them because I was too in the moment to remember them. And that's how you know you enjoyed it. I, yeah. think. I think that's what we're missing with a lot of the social media and the people on their phones and, and, and shit like that. You know, if you're taking yourself outside of the moment to take a picture – you're probably missing something. And yeah. that's not always bad, but in most cases, you want to be a participant and not a spectator. So I want to invite the listener back into the conversation, and I want to ask you as a listener, are, how much are you in the moment? How much are you thinking about being happy? And how much are you just being happy and then realizing, oh, my God, I just that where did the day go? And I think it was, I spent, I think I was happy during the day, but it doesn't really even matter because it passed by so quickly. I'm sure I would, well, I'm if, sure I enjoyed what I was doing. Well, the thing is, is that, you know, our memories, the way our brains work, you know, they, they, it's a selective memory. We, we remember things that enable us to survive. That's how yeah. our brains evolved. It wasn't supposed to be a tape recorder. And, and, in, and although for some people they remember more things than others and it, what's, it's not really important. Because there really are no moments that are important except the one you're in at the moment. You hmm. know, the, the past is over. Bam. Stop. Say that again. <laughs> I, I said there are no moments that are important except the one that you're in. Yeah. That's really the only one that matters. It's only one yeah. you have any kind of interaction with. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I meet so many people who are so fluffed up by who they used to be. And they tell me all the stories of who they were. And... I lose interest in it at a certain point because everybody has the moments that yeah. they were. I'm more interested in who you are now and what happens in the moment we share together, right. which I is really. I think that's very insightful because you're being invented at every moment, even from a quantum point of view, <laughs> not to Love get it. nuts, but not to get no, too No, you're not weird. getting nuts. But, but the, the point is, is that, you know, we, we don't live in the past. Literally, we don't. It's over. It's dead. It's gone. It, 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 the memories that you have left can only serve you to help you move forward in the moment. So hopefully the memories that you have are, are generally ones that are more to help you get along. And if you had great, if you were in the zone, as they say, and things were going, you know, you were just really productive or really uh, focused or this or that, you know, you're not going to have that kind of you know, detailed blow by blow memory of it. You're just going to know, you're just going to label it as, I think that was a good moment, Love you know, it. and that's a good thing. And it, you shouldn't be sad about that. That's actually, you, you know, hopefully you can look back, you know, after 90 years or whatever and go, wow, where did the time go? You know, yeah. because if you can remember every moment, it would be drudgery, I think. You know? Well, they say time flies when you're having fun, right? Yeah. So, so. Let me switch the focus a little bit. I, I, I want you to know ahead of time I suck at a lightning round, but I always try and say I'm going to do it with people okay. where we ask questions and sort of the idea is quick questions, quick answers. I'm way too curious okay. to allow this to go so, on too long, but, but I'll ask you and you tell me what you feel. Okay. Are you a dog guy or a cat guy? Dog. Dog, okay. Coffee or tea? Both. Both. Um. Would you say you're conservative or liberal? I would say I am self-aware, uh, and um, I'm not necessarily a liberal. I'm not necessarily a conservative. I'm, I'm a common sense guy. Okay. 
So I, I basically, I, I, I don't really uh, affiliate with, with what the masses have put out as left and right. I, I don't think yeah. anyone does really. I think it's no, phony to say I'm just one guy. You know, I'm a, I'm a multidimensional person. So do you find that like in a world where you don't associate with where the world tries to associate, mm -hmm. do you find that sometimes you feel alone and left out and misunderstood? No. And the reason for that, am I supposed to give a reason for that? Or is it I, 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 well, you just, you just took <laughs> away my question, but I, you don't have, I don't have to ask the question <laughs> now because this is the guy who didn't think we were going to have enough time to fill up a conversation. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's good. I love it. So what I want to just highlight is there are certain people listening that feel if they're not part of one silo or another, they're going to feel left out and alone. Yeah. So what, I, what I'm particularly interested in is how you don't feel that not being a part of either silo. Be, because I'm not anchored by other people's opinions. I'm not looking for their approval. Um, generally, I mean, sure, we all fall prey to moments of weakness and, and things, and that's part of life, and you, you grow from that, hopefully. But generally speaking, I'm grounded. You know, we get back to balance again. You know, if you're not afraid to be alone and you're not afraid to be in front of people, when there's tough times and you are alone, you know how to deal with that. And when there's times where you're stuck with people and you're doing that, you know how to deal with that. The point is, is that what's always anchored and what's always centered in there all the time is me yeah and i've gone inward enough in my own way to feel comfortable with me so i'm not really you know the world can do what it needs to do that doesn't always have to include me you know i'm watching the karate kid remake now on netflix cobra kai and you are like right with Daniel here. You know, he has with the balance. The balance right. is a huge Hold on, thing. Let me for him. catch a fly. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, so I love it. But, but that does resonate with me. And, and I never really thought about the movie like that. Um, to be, you know, the movie is really, you know, about centering. And so is, I suppose, martial arts. And, and so is music. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can't get on stage and be. Uh, distracted and there's so much to be distracted by there's you know 20,000 people out there or there's lights or your your, your microphone's not working something's going to distract you if you're distracted by those things then you're not really there yeah you're, you're over here. so stay with me stay with me on that because there are so many people in the world today that are distracted by everything and that That's don't have any idea how to stay centered amongst those distractions. What advice would you give them? Well, for me, uh, I didn't learn this overnight. It, it was sort of just who I've become, I grew into, you know. Um, I think that if you're passionate about something um, that you feel you're good at and you, you have a, a way to um, create it, you know, whether it be artwork of some kind or music of course for me or writing or maybe it's just you know public speaking or talking whatever it is that you find creative if that's something that centers you gives you a sense of what I was talking about a, a minute ago about being in that zone where you're not thinking about the time and all that that's where it starts because that's kind of a source of med it's it's kind of a form of medic meditation even though you're not meditating, you know, it, yeah. all meditation really is, is, is the ability to shut everything off and just be. And, and for me, music does that for me. I can sit at the piano and sit down and decide, I just want to play and, and let my fingers do whatever they want to do and not think about what I'm playing or try to wonder if this is going to be a song, just play. And an hour, two hours, three hours can go by and I get up, and I haven't accomplished anything that the world would say would be a con. I mean, I didn't write a song. I didn't uh, you right. know, s fix cancer. I didn't do anything. But what I did do is I centered myself again. And I got up and I feel better. Yeah. I'm able to go back out there in the world and try it again. And um, so to answer your question, I think what people need to do is stop listening to other people and figure out. And, and it's not always easy, but 
don't give yourself a lot of pressure, but just try to find something that you love to do and lock yourself away doing it for an hour and get yeah. the, get, get what, it, learn what that feeling feels like to be with yourself and be happy there. And even if for an hour and that, that, in, that in itself will, will allow you to, to shut off those voices a little bit and then yeah. come back and you can be stronger. You're that's, talking that's to a I guy. Was. You're talking to a guy who lived ten years as a monk in a monastery, and my intoxication, like your mon, like your your music is your intoxication. My intoxication was my practice of meditation because once I experienced right. the taste of being yeah. with my beloved, I didn't want to do anything else but be with my beloved. That's interesting. And so I would spend hours and hours and hours yeah. just absorbed. I remember one time being in Italy because we took tours to Italy. And my wife was with me. Not my wife's passed away. Who was with me then? But um, she was with me, and we sat in the Portuncula, which is the little temple that Saint Francis built. That they've built a big, you know, church around now. But the Portuncula is a very small little thing that he when when Jesus told him rebuild my church, he thought literally to rebuild the church, and he built this building. And I sat down to meditate and. Um, I think I'd had a fight with my wife or something before that. And I just said, I'm just going to sit and meditate for a few minutes. My wife came and tapped me and, and was like, are, like, are you okay? And I said, yeah, well, I'm, I'm great. What's going on? She said, well, everybody's waiting for you. You've been sitting here for three hours. I literally would have known if I was sitting there for three. I thought I was there for three minutes. Yeah. Um, well, and you were in that place. Yeah. So I want to ask the listeners, especially now, again, tune in. What's that place where you where you lose sight of time, where you're so absorbed in the practice of the practice of what you're doing or in just doing what you're doing that time sort of dissolves for you? And do you have one of those things? And if you do, how can you how often do you go to it? Do you want to go to it more often? How do you balance? How do you find that balance to bring that more in your life? Yeah. Um, do you feel like you fit into the world the whole your whole life or have you always felt a little bit different? Well, there are times when I've I've been banging my head against the wall, wondering where I fit. Um, that's gone away as I've gotten older, because I realize that you know the universe is a big place, <laughs> uh, and so is the and, and so is our world. When you think about you know how many billions of souls are on this planet, you know you you uh, there's only one place to go, and that's inside. You know, yeah. and if if I'm not happy there. And I'm not gonna be happy. So um, the I I I care less and less as I get older about fitting you know fitting in to anything in particular. Um, so no, it's not it's not an issue for me anymore. I, I yeah. you know I'm sure it is for most kids in high school and you're going through some times where not only you're changing mentally but biologically things are going on. I mean it's just a lot of changes. So you can't expect someone to you know just be born that way it's a learned thing i think yeah i think i was surprised from the data i received from that question you answered it unlike anybody else which i love but most people felt like they didn't fit into the world and i would have assumed coming in that most people felt like they fit in because they try so doggone hard to fit into the world mm. and so i would have thought I just more think people so important yeah i love that i love yeah. it because, well I, it reminds me of an answer someone gave in this room where she said, of course I fit in. And I said, and I raised my eyebrow because she didn't seem to say anything that would have led to that. And she <laughs> said, she said, because we're a world full of misfits, nobody fits in. So I fit into that world perfectly. Oh, okay. But I also like the way you brought it in, which is yeah. when you fit into yourself, you fit into everything. You don't have to worry about what else you fit yeah. into. Yeah. I mean, it, there's, it's a little bit of, um, I mean, some people might call it um, selfishness. You know, but there's there's something to it that is I mean, selfish is a good word and it's a bad word, depending on your perspective of that word. And there is a net, you, you know, the the old saying, you can't help other people if you haven't helped yourself. Yeah. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? So the outside, it's there. It's there for you to explore. It's there for you to get battered and beat up and and maybe even win a few times. But at the end of the day. When you lay down, go to bed, it's just you, yeah. you know? So. Yeah. Love it. What are you most scared of? <clears throat> hmm. What am I most 
scared of? Well, I still want to accomplish things. And I, 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 I think, to, if, if we're being honest here, I think I'm afraid of, uh, of uh, reaching the end of my journey and not accomplishing as much as I was hoping to. Well, very honest. Thank you. What, that, what do you think would... keeps me up at night sometimes. What do you think would happen if you reached the end of your journey and you didn't accomplish all that you had hoped to? Nothing. Nothing at all. Just me. I'd be pissed. <laughs> okay. That's it. I mean, that's <laughs> the bottom line. You know? I mean, there is no... There's, there, there's not like any some big trophy at the end of this you know it's just <laughs> and that's what's important for people to remember when they're trying to find that place where they're the happiest it's it's there's, there's no road there's no there's no goal there's no there's no trophy at the end of the at the end of the game it, it just just play it that's it that's all there is it's just personally i have this personal um i mean when i say personal i mean i, I my own uh drive and my own ambition uh, sometimes takes uh, takes uh, on a um, you know takes takes too much of what you know it's, it gets out of balance and I think about yeah. it too much I obsess on it and that's that's not a good thing. What would you like to accomplish that you're scared you might not? I would still like to perform more than I am. Certainly this year, uh, I'd like to. Uh, I'd like I'd like to have I mean it's music related I've spent my whole yeah. life with with that and I'd I'd like to see uh, I'd still like to have a hit record. <laughs> yeah. After all these years, a personal hit record or a hit record with with a Survivor. Well, uh, no, personally, yeah. I mean, yeah. it would be nice to we have talked about uh, recording some more and doing another record, um, and I hope that comes to pass. But you know, Frankie Sullivan the guitar player, uh, you know, he's got a 40 year legacy in that band and he may not be willing to, to do anymore. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. But, uh, for me personally, I'm not done creating. So I, I'd like, uh, I still want to do what I want to do. Love it. Is that what you're most excited about? Well, uh, it's certainly what propels me. It gives me a sense of, um, direction. I mean, the, Although I just said there is no road and there is no end, th the truth is, though, with res regard to a – you still need to feel like there's a direction. It, 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 yeah. it, you have to sort of give yourself a sense of where do you want to go that way. It doesn't matter. Just go. And so that kind of gives me a sense of movement. And um, that's what I think everybody needs to get out of bed in the morning, you know? We all need to feel yeah. like we're important to something. Yeah. If it's not just for ourselves. So do you ever find like a dichotomy between the fact that we push ourselves pretty hard internally to get to, to do this thing that we think is really important for us to do, but there really isn't a road there that we, and there's no, yeah. there's no trophy at the end of the road that says, congratulations, you did it because it's only, is it only important for us that we think we do it and we do it? Do you understand what I'm necessary. asking? Yeah, I do. I think it's necessary for us to play that game, uh, for us to be able to um, move and grow and, and, and move on. Remember, it's the moments that are important. Yeah. So yeah. in order to have another moment, I need, to have, I need to pursue something to have that next moment. So it's not about collecting a whole bunch of you know, wins, if you will, to that that add up to this big prize or something it's more this pushes me to the next moment and then that'll push me to the next moment and hopefully you, you look back and you've had a lot of great moments you know i love it let me push you a little bit if i can and you can just say i don't want to answer that and screw right. you i don't want to do it okay <laughs> I, I, and i'm 100 percent fine with that because i don't want to I'm, it's not meant as a fight it's meant to understand a little bit okay yeah for those people who are listening, I'm wondering if they're hearing some of the same dichotomy that I might be hearing in the fact that there's only moments and the moments are all that happen and, and we want to, we need to have a direction for to make those moments come alive and feel something. Mm -hmm. But then if our direction is a hit song and we may not be able to do a hit song, 
There's so many people that have a mm -hmm. direction that they'll never accomplish. Not that you won't, you might, you will. But mm -hmm. some, some people might have this carrot at the end of the stick that says, this is what I want and I can never really accomplish it. And, and, right. and that, that direction frustrates them and makes them anxiety prone sure. because they don't ever feel that they'll be able to accomplish what it is they're wanting. When in fact, if they could really just live in this moment and enjoy creating what they create, whether it becomes a hit song or it doesn't, they've created a hit song for themselves. Do you hear what I'm saying? I, I hear you, but I, I'm not sure I hear a question. Um, the question is, why does it need to have a destination? Why does the destination need to have a hit song? I because that saying. often causes okay. this frustration I, yeah, that, I, versus I living in the moment of having this beautiful dream of just living this moment, creating every hit song you possibly can in what, this moment. Well, the, the way I justify that Please. is, um, you see, it's, there's nothing wrong with having lofty goals and, and having things that you want to achieve. I mean, we, I am a human being. I, I do right. have needs and wants and desires. So there's nothing wrong with admitting to myself that I'd sure like to try that. Or I'd, I'd like to achieve that. Whether I do or not does not determine, it is not, I, I don't identify by my, by solely by, by things that I think I have achieved. That's not my only source of identity. You know, these are just things I care about and things I'd yeah. like to see happen. And like I said, there, there are things that drive you to the next moment. Ultimately, I think if I pressed, if you said what, what would make you the happiest is to be in those moments more often. And I don't know how to always create them other than to keep striving for something that I may or may not be able to attain. You know? So am I hearing you correctly that, that and, and this is really interesting, and I, I just love your willingness to engage me in this conversation, okay? Sure. From what I hear you saying is this goal that I have in the future of having this goal, reaching this goal, yeah. is what makes my moments come to life. It but helps. we can't live in the future. We can't live in the past. But right. it, it, it sort of ener having a goal in the future energizes these moments. Could it also destroy the moments by saying because well, we don't it, we don't get to it? Of course, if you're that kind of a person. But if you know who you are, you know, and you know that. I mean, I've been trying to do the same thing for 40 years. OK, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people would have just. Hey, I'm out. I'm not getting the attention I deserve, you know, right. um, or I'm not getting what I want or, or whatever. But if that were true for me, I would have quit a long time ago. Yeah. Um, what's really true for me is that next gig, the next, the next song, the next recording, the next something, um, the next phone call. You know, the excitement of that. The point is, is that it's the moments. And if I take myself out of the game, I don't get those moments. So I got to create Understood. something to push. So I, I, I see what you're saying. Some people artificially put or I, some people are, think that that's the goal. Well, it's a goal. It's not that that's the goal. It's just a goal. You need to have a target to shoot for to carry you through the air. It's the yeah. air that you're in. You know, when you throw a dart. It's when the dart hits the board. Great. It hit the board. It's going nowhere after that. Maybe you hit the bullseye. I don't know. But in doing so, the dart got to fly. And that's what you're yeah. hoping for. I love that. You know, they tell a story about a guy who died and went to heaven, if such a place exists. And he was met by the heavenly guy that shows him around heaven. And the heavenly guy takes him to the junkyard. And, <laughs> and shows them all the things in the heavenly junkyard that heaven, that God wanted to give to people and they rejected. And he takes them up to this beautiful um, BMW, you know, loaded BMW. And, and the guy that he's well showing around says, oh my God, who would have turned this thing down? How would, how's, how's that even possible? And the guy looks at him and says, funny enough, that person was you. You turned this down. He said, I would have never done that. I would have never turned that down. He said, yeah, yeah, you did, because all the time you were praying for a Volkswagen. We were one trying to give you this BMW, and you wouldn't <laughs> take it. We had to give you a Volkswagen. So part of what I wonder is, like, I hear your excitement and the beauty of those moments. Yeah. 
what would happen if you surrender to those moments and let those moments take you to the goal that they want to take you to rather than having this goal that you hope you'll get to that these moments will get you to which may or may not be your goal i think we're i think we're fixating on this goal that i I mentioned uh, a little too much um you asked me you know what would you like to achieve yeah i said what makes you excited or what makes you, what, what, what would make, well, yeah, you did, but you also asked me what would you like to accomplish or something like that. There was something, some goal that, you know, related question. I'm sorry if I don't remember it exactly. That's but, okay. Um, so the point is, is that, you know, I think that you can still be a person that, that has uh, a want of something that might be uh, a difficult thing to um, acquire or achieve. Um, gotcha. But still be, but still be balanced and centered. I mean, in yeah. other words, if I don't, let's put it this way: if I don't achieve it, you know, my world's not going to end. You know, yeah. that that that's the difference. Not that yeah. I'm not passionate about it, and not that I'm not constantly looking for uh, ways to accomplish that goal. But in, but I've learned to recognize that in doing so, I would be missing out on all those, as you would say in your story, all those BMWs that are along the side of the road I'm passing, yeah. you know, because the thing is, is that uh, it's, I've said it uh, earlier and you've said it, you know, it, it's, it's what we're doing now that, that yeah. is where you're at. You know, I, 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 I I have to have something that gets me up in the morning, something that makes me feel like, oh, I'm going to try this today and, and, and constantly accomplish that or try to accomplish that. But that doesn't necessarily define me. It okay. just helps me to stay focused on things. And I find that a focused mind is, is a healthier one. Talk to me about trust. Do you easily trust or is it hard for you to do? Well, I'm talking to you and I haven't met you and I'm, being honest with you, so there's a there's a form of trust. You big form. Um, yeah. So, uh, I, you know, trust is, uh, you know, there's different kinds of trust. You know, there's that deep, deep trust that you get with somebody that you've known for a long time that knows a lot about you. People like my wife, hypothetically, that would, you know, those kinds of trusts. And there's trusts among people that um, you don't know, you know. And I think I, uh, I tend to give people the benefit of the doubt. Uh, and uh, try to take them at face value as much as I possibly can. And I, yeah. I think I'm uh, a relatively trusting person until you prove otherwise. Beautiful. I'm One of the things I've been most shocked at is some of the people that have come into this room have said it's easier to trust a stranger than it is to trust people that know me. Because oh, when wow. I talk to people that know me, I'm scared mm-hmm. that they're going to judge me or, or think what I'm saying is stupid. When someone I don't know, they, I'm not worried about that. Yeah, I've heard that too a lot. Um, I'm not like that. Uh, I, yeah. I, 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 no. Um, the, the reason being is that, you know, again, the people that say that are people that are insecure, a little, a little, a, and I, we all have our insecurities. I, I'm victim of that too. I, I'm just saying that they're generally come from a, an insecure place and they're not, and that's because they haven't, they haven't explored themselves enough to feel yeah. confident in those situations, you know, that's my opinion. And, and yeah, you know, totally. some people well, might take what, offense to that, but that's, no, but that's what we're asking for. We're not, we're, we're not saying you're, you're not at telling everybody to agree with your opinion. You're no, sharing no. your opinion. It's just right? what works for me. Totally. Um, do you believe you're a leader or a follower? Leader. Let me dive into that a little bit. Especially, and I know you're not a political person, and I know you don't associate with the parties, but it's such an easy example to give for the example. But it could mm-hmm. be in medicine, it could be in education, it could be in in just about anything. Okay. In government, we elect our we elect the people that we think will lead us. And what I've seen, at least lately, mm-hmm. is we is those leaders end up being in silos of people who believe like them. But it's almost as if they le- lose their ability to lead within the silo that they've been ele- that they've agreed mm-hmm. to be in, yeah. because they don't stand up for like, just to say whether you're a Trump person or not a Trump person. There's some things he's done good, some things he's done sure. terrible, but the people within the Trump camp don't have the ability to say, God, he really messed up here. 
you know, they're asked about it. No, we don't, we don't want to comment. You know, they just say, and the, <laughs> and the other side of the, the other side of the camp doesn't give them, doesn't give the dog a bone. They don't give him anything. Like everything he's done has been wrong. And anybody who right. stands up and says, no, he did this right. Right. And then I, I was in this room with somebody and I, I was asking the same question and something that happened for me during the answer they gave, it wasn't their answer. It was just what I came to in their answer, which was, there are things that I love about myself. I'm so happy with the person I've become. And I'm, I'm really confident in the person that I am. But there's some small things in my life that I would really like to change. But the momentum of my life is so strong. Every time I stand up to it in the past, I haven't been able to. I still stand up and try. But I haven't been able to stand up to that momentum. Mm. And I said, why? Of course, it makes sense that if we can't stand up to the momentum of our own uh, of our own voices inside of our head, yeah. how yeah. would we expect the people that lead to stand up to the momentum of the people that are part of them? What's your thoughts on that? Well, you, you, you hmm. well, when when you say what's my thoughts, you, you you started off with a little bit of a political kind of example, but you concluded it by the fact that you stand up to them anyway. You're th these these. Um, these things that you feel that need work. Yeah. So it sounds, I don't know how I can add to that. Um, I mean, I what do you do? Feel, do you have I, the, do you have the courage to stand up to your momentum I'd like of the, so I'd like to think I do. Um, I think that there are days when I don't. Yeah. And you, I'm grumpy <laughs> or I'm yeah. pissed off or whatever. But the point is, is I don't live there. Yeah. I might visit grumpy town. But I, 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 it's just I just visit, you know what I mean. I don't hold grudges either, you know. I get, I get mad at people. I get it out, move on. Uh, yeah. Mo, and I don't think about it too much. But, you know, with respect to, um, I think a lot of people, and I think this goes back to the original part of what you just started to say, was that people tend to uh, surrender their judgment and, and their, their, res, their responsibility to, to leaders. They expect them to be, uh, you know, icons for their better selves and, and gives them an excuse to, to not have to work on it. I, 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 I don't think that the answer is outside. The answer is them or the answer is a, another politician or a political party. I think the answer is in you. Yeah. If we had, if we, if we taught children at a young age critical thinking and how to, uh, how to navigate those times in their lives when they uh, are unsure of themselves, you know, and that it's okay to be unsure and to be insecure, but recognize it and learn that it's, it's a moment, it'll pass, and you can, yeah. you can get through it. The point is, is that you, you would develop a, a, you know, a generation of people that would pick better leaders because they're not looking to be led yeah. in the same way. Love it. Love it. You know, they, they may be represented as they're supposed to be, but yeah. being led, I, I don't like the word leaders. I don't like the word, uh, um, you know, uh, the, 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 whole, the whole idea that, that politicians are somehow... Uh, they're they're um, they're thought of as as if, you know holders of of some type of platitudes that that we don't. I mean, it's just it's nuts. You know, gotcha. we, we're I'm not speaking very well right now. We we either we either are strong on our own, and and you find this. I mean, I mean, we have parents. We lean on them as much as we can, but then we grow up. Yeah. And then we end up becoming parents to our parents. If if things work out right, you know what I mean. We're, yeah. you know we help each other, but if I, it's the same thing. It's just the fact that we have to. We have. I think people need to go more inward and and learn to deal with the shit that's being dealt to them, at an earlier age, and and learn what that feels like, so that they they aren't so easily readily uh, willing to surrender their their free will to uh, to other people to lead them. Okay. I don't know. That that got a little well, messy there, but. No, it's okay. It's all good. When you look at all that's going on in the, in the world with the virus and the civil rights movement and the Me Too movement and mm -hmm. institutions falling apart, <coughs> what, 
Do you think the world's trying to say something to us? No. No, I think we 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 reap what we sow. Uh, are we saying the same thing? I'm not sure because I don't think that the world in it, it, you, you have to define the world. If we're talking about society <coughs> as the world, then perhaps I'm thinking I'm talking about the environment right now. No, I, I the the environment. You know, it. I'm a science guy, so you know things are things are things happen because of of certain things that happen. You know, this this happened and then that happened and and the laws of physics do this and this happens. So you know, if you put this in the equation, you're going to get this. I, I'm a firm believer is of of you know you pretty much get what you put into it. You know. So you say our choices that we've made have created our situation Absolutely. that we're living in. Yeah. That what I, that I'm asking I, is something. What, what I'm asking is something slightly different, which is, which is, do you believe that, like we talk and we listen to each other sometimes not so well, but at least we have the ability to listen if we choose to. Do you think things around us? Do you believe our employ our jobs, our our employment speaks to us and wants something from us? Do you believe the earth wants something from us? Do you believe that our 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 healthcare system wants something from us? Do you believe that other things that are not human speak to us and have a voice? So you're, you're talking metaphysically now, right? Yeah, I'm just talking about in general. Do you think that that the world well, around think- us is a partner in what we're doing? I think the universe is a giant feedback machine. Okay. You know? So, you know, what you do has repercussions. Just like okay. throwing a pebble into a pond, you know, it's it's going to ripple out and it's going to have unknown uh variables that are going to come back and, you know, it, it, so I think that if you are um you know, if you're if you're constantly doing things that are in the negative category, you're going to get that back. Yeah. And and what we okay. perceive as negative, you know, because yeah. the earth, the universe, the world does not have a perception of negative or positive or high or low or up or down. It just is. So, you know, you, you throw something there, it's just going to come right back out. So I think that we, 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 we as a species have to learn to be a little bit more, I, again, it, it goes back to, goes back to who you are. It goes back to understanding that, you know, we are. Uh, we are in control of our own thoughts, of our own actions, and that's about it. Love it. But that's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Jeffrey, I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for um, a most having the unusual faith. podcast. <laughs> yeah, I want to ha- thank you for the faith in in having this discussion, which you didn't think sure. would a- actually fill up an hour, which probably could have filled up a lot of days. Um, cause I didn't even get to ask you some of the things I wanted to ask you because of the conversation that we had. Oh, y- you said it's an un- most unusual podcast. Tell me why. Unusual for me. So tell me, me why be more specific. Uh, well, because most of my, um, reason for, for doing, uh, some of the interviews that I've been doing lately have been to, uh, promote my music or promote, you know, to talk to people about, uh, eighties iconic stuff. Um, you know, and, and just sort of keeping, I'm not able to go out and perform. So this is like performing for me, you right. know? Uh, so, uh, that's how it's different, but I didn't expect to have a philosophical, metaphysical, spiritual conversation with you. So, oh, um, cool. it was enjoyable. I like that we do stuff that you don't expect. And now's your moment. I want, we're, you're going to send me all of your, uh, website URL, all that yeah. stuff is going to come to me. But is there something happening that you want to promote right now that we could talk about, that we could put in your show notes? You know, it's funny. I, after, after this conversation, everything seems so trivial now, doesn't it? Right? <laughs> I like that. I, <laughs> but, like, I, but I love that. I want you to, I want you to, I want you to notice that. Because, I, because sometimes we set our, all of our time and our energy into the things that mean the least. And none of our time and energy and the things yeah. that mean the most. That's true. And it's, it's and, can't be avoided, too. That's part of being human sometimes. Yeah. And and what we'll do is we will promote you. We'll send people to your website. We'll send people to your music. We'll send people there. Because obviously we want people to do what to feel what you feel and, and feel what you do. 
my goal in this is to let people fall in love with the person and then want to have everything the person's done rather oh, than yeah. have that have sell them product or things without knowing the person because i yeah. think the world works better when we're friends so that's again i want to thank you for coming i want to My thank pleasure. those people who listen for listening if you like the show please be kind enough to share it with people you like um please be kind enough to check out jeffrey's uh media links and social media links and listen to the music that he's created listen to the, the songs that he's done uh buy them uh enjoy <laughs> them you know in, and support him in that um is there one last thing you want to say before we cut out uh, no, I just hope that we stay healthy, you know, let's get through this. Yeah. I absolutely. need to get back out there. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you again, Jeffrey, for coming. Thank you everybody for Thank listening. You, um, it's, it's been great. And until the next stranger shows up in the room, don't be strangers. When we keep people as strangers, the world we live in is strange. But when we take the time to short period of time to just get to know somebody a little, they might not become our best friends or be friends, but they're, Jeffrey and I can talk to each other again on a basis of something we've already had a discussion on and feel like there's a friendship emerging there. And why not live in a friendly world rather than a strange world? It would change the dynamics of the world we live in. And I want to encourage each of you to take a moment and go up to somebody you don't know that you've never seen before, never talked to, and just ask them how they're doing. Because who knows what will happen in that moment? Who knows what you'll hear, who, what you'll do for another person's point of view, how you'll change the, the day, not by helping them or fixing them or changing them, but just by caring enough to ask them the question. So thank you again for, every, for being here. Jeffrey, thank you again. Thank you, folks. Until the next stranger comes into this room, be friends with each other. Stay safe and be kind. Ciao.